Good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure for me to speak here today in this kind of context. And I would like to ask the audience uh, to take their mobile phones, <laughs> uh, because uh, I would like to have a little, in the end of my speech, I would like to do something with the audience together. And there is uh, the App Store, or for the Androids, the, uh, there's an App Store too, I think, um, and look for an application called Alpha Pulse. So this you can do a little bit during I speak, just remember the letters, and I will come back to this uh, later on. Alpha Pulse, okay. So, I, before I start talking a little bit towards the city, I would like to talk a little bit, or to make a little bit better understanding where my work comes from and what is the, what is the idea behind this. So, so, many people ask me where is my basically inspiration coming from, and I would say the main inspiration for me is nature, of course. <clears throat> and. Um, I have a few shots here of, uh, of exhibitions uh, I did in the past. You see here a uh, monocrystal. So the crystal is a very important uh, aspect of me, uh, not only because of uh, it's, a, let's say, it's, it's a very interesting atomic structure. This monocrystal has a very um, uniform, very grid order. As well, the crystal is a metaphor for me. The crystal is a metaphor for me in terms of growing, how we grow. And uh, a crystal starts growing on a particle, on something like a dust or something, uh, irritation. Let's call it an error. And uh, this crystals grow in a way, uh, for instance, snow crystals grow um, following a certain principle. They all have six corners. But each crystal is completely individual. There's not one crystal looks like the same. So I'm very interested in basically principles, in principles who can, uh, rules, principles who can basically define something, who can define maybe a common ground, but in the same time, they leave space for uh, individual situation. So they have the option that we all can create something what is unique. And this kind of combination of, uh, let's say, a principle or, a, uh, let's say, a rule, and then as well the possibility to be playful, but to be individual inside that rule, I think this is a very important situation for me. So there are other aspects what are really interesting for me is, of course, geometry and mathematics. Uh, here you see a rhomboid. This rhomboid is uh, accessible. But in the same time, uh, there are sound components in this rhomboid. So I, uh, as well, interested in things we see and things we don't see. But basically, we have, we have problems to perceive. I make an example, our ear is possible only to hear from, let's say, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. That's depending on the age. But uh, animals, our living creatures, have different frequency ranges. And to, in order to expand, to make sound maybe perceptible or enjoyable or visible, I'm very interested in basically the idea of visualization or in basically made, making that we can understand different invisible processes who we not necessarily have senses for. Uh, of course, mathematics is an important situation as well. Here, uh, geometry, as I was saying, it's a, <clears throat> for me, it's, well, it's a kind of metaphor. Uh, there's always the big question, is 
mathematics existing really? Is, is it implemented in nature or is it basically an abstraction of something what we're thinking is in nature? So this is uh, as well for me an interesting model because uh, as artists we're working on very individual ideas how the world is constructed. We, we're basically proposing very individual concepts and ideas each artist is very different, and but as well, I think that we expanding the idea how the nature is constructed, how we are surrounded, that there are existing abstract languages who are not necessarily implemented in nature. So, <clears throat> for me as well, it's important, uh, specifically electromagnetic waves wave frequencies. So I not only talk about sound, in this case you see some images where I'm working with very low frequencies on liquids, visualizing basically super low frequencies, what we cannot hear, but we can see a sound piece in this range. We can see in the back photographs of ultra low frequencies, they're arranging liquid shapes. Um, another aspect is <clears throat> the image and the imaginary. So. We, when we're dealing with art, we're creating, of course, a lot of images. And uh, as well, in the, uh, we have this opportunity with these images to, uh, uh, to imagine things. To, so the imaginary is a very important aspect. So there are works who basically just uh, create an image, but as well, they have references. They can create a story. Here's a work called Anti what refers to a very old shape of Albrecht Dürer, what was uh, very strongly discussed uh, as a geometrical object in the Renaissance. Or there are uh, tubes where I store sound, basically like in a bottle, basically sound bottle messages. Or I flip TVs, uh, so the image is kind of not recognizable, but uh, we imagine the images. So, <clears throat> what I'm interested in is uh, visualization. Uh, visualization in, in this way that I can uh, basically visualize something that we are not necessarily can sense. For instance, elect, uh, magnetic fields. Magnetic fields, so can speakers are basically producing magnetic fields, we're surrounded by magnetic fields, our body itself is a magnetic field. So uh, in order to understand uh, what is going on, I think uh, visualizers are very, it can be a very important tool. So in my work, I'm working as well on this kind of principle of visualizing. Or I use our principles here, you have a cloud chamber, where you basically can see radiation, what is of course very essential for our living, and, but we have no real, let's say, opportunity to, visual, to see it as, as humans. But we have to think about devices who can make us visible pr principles of nature who are really essential for our living. Data visualization is another aspect, of course. <clears throat> Here is another uh, sculpture, what in the first moment looks like a normal art piece. So, I'm moving slowly from the individual concept to the city now. This uh, sculpture looks like a, it's a kind of a mural sculpture. But at the same time, uh, this is situated on a public square. At the same time, <clears throat> this sculpture is a kind of sensor. So when it get, it's getting dark, this kind of sculpture can become translucent, because there's a light inside. Uh, the glass is half transparent, you see the structure of it. And depending on the communication frequencies, like mobile telephones, CB funk, every, all the frequencies, the, the sculptures start, uh, have different intensity of light inside. So you can go with your mobile phone to the sculpture and make, it, make the sculpture transparent is not reflecting automatically anymore the surrounding. It starts to interact with transparency, but as well with the, with 
the people. And this is an aspect what I really think is specifically for this forum very in interesting, that <clears throat> public spaces today is very difficult because uh, a lot of these public spaces are, uh, people have sometimes not the feeling anymore that they owning that spaces, that uh, basically we, uh, we have to give these public spaces back to the people, to everybody, to us in a way. So uh, I would like as well to art, with art for instance, with a playful situation where you basically can interact, where you can uh, modify a sculpture on a public square. I think you are, have a little bit more freedom back, winning a little bit more freedom back because in, specifically in dance environments, we losing a lot of public space because of regulations. So as artists, we of course fighting always with the situation that the regulations and of public art uh, sometimes is for us very, very difficult. This for instance was a... This was a, a piece in Berlin in Potsdamer Platz, where basically the traffic, uh, a camera was capturing all the traffic on the crossing, and the, the building itself modified according to the traffic. If there was a lot of traffic, the facade was very active. If there's a very little active uh, action, uh, you could basically, as a single user crossing the uh, could cross uh, the street and make the building illuminate. So this is something that I, I think is very interesting in terms of public. Another piece what I uh, made, it's, uh, I don't want to talk about this too much, but I, I'm very interested as well in the idea of the combination of sp uh, space, light, and <clears throat> sound. The, this kind of three main elements, and of course architectural elements are integrated in this too. Aaron Mystics, I was mentioning uh, before, but as well, uh, out of basis processes. This is, uh, for me, a very important thing. When I'm designing, for instance, a facade for a building, uh, in this case, on this, uh, then I'm not so interested in the result, in the finally result to show something of my artwork. I actually would like to define a principle where the people have the possibility to de define as well the facade. In this case, uh, it was a very analog, let's say, not very digital situation. I was invited to uh, have a temporary art space in Berlin, in the middle of Berlin. Um, and they gave me the whole facade, yeah. So uh, people had stickers and they could come and modify this facade. So you can see, there have been thousands and thousands of stickers and uh, people start modifying this who facade and sticking and being creative. And, uh, and it was an incredible successful project because people really winning back as well in the middle of the city, in the middle of Berlin, next to the TV tower, next to the museum's island, space back where people start become really creative. Like the only principle I designed is use the stickers. And, uh, and that made this basically a kind of living orgasm, organisms. So I skipped this work. There is a whole bunch of works where I'm very interested in perception, how we perceive things, how we, how we perceive light, color, uh, how we uh, perceive semiotics of science. This is an installation I did in Japan a few months ago. And uh, just let me skip here. So. I would, uh, would like to come to something that uh, is very important for me as well for a specific work. Uh, it's called biofeedback or um, it's basically a pulsi pulsing light source. I created a work, I will show a little video here. It's called Alpha Pulse. Alpha Pulse refers to alpha waves.
Yeah. So this, what you saw, basically was an installation using, uh, utilizing one of the highest buildings in Hong Kong. It's the highest building, actually. It's almost 500 meters high. And uh, uh, you can see it's the ICC Tower in, London, uh, in Hong Kong. And uh, using, basically, the city, the cityscape as a screen, like uh, basically visualizing the sound, there was uh, two parts. There was one part basically the, the tower itself pulsing, uh, stimulating brain waves uh, on alpha waves with a kind of, so kind of bio feedback idea behind that. But as well for the opening was this performance. That's what the images, what you saw, where additional screens being installed and I performed together with the tower, creating an environment where people can as well interact. And the interaction was basically that uh, people had mobile phone applications and uh, they could basically scan the tower or one of the towers, for instance, on this uh, rooftop of one of the piers and uh, become with the mobile phone, with a mo uh, bit more or less with the mobile device, a part of the screen. And... Uh, <laughs> Sure. You can see this in, this in this second movie a little bit better. There, <clears throat> first of all, this, the cityscape, the situation of Hong Kong is quite unique, so it's a very site-specific work. Um, <clears throat> this was the opening event. This was more or less the performative. Here you see a mobile phone scanning the tower and synchronizing to the light sources. So people could basically use their mobile phones. Yeah. I would like to uh, do a little experiment with you together. Uh, maybe in the meantime, you uh, could download this application. And what I would like to do with you together now <laughs> is, uh, I hope some people did it, uh, just open the application, if you have it. And when you open the application, you can see a sync button. I can show this here. And you just point the sync button on the, on the, basically on the bar. It will take a little bit of time, and you, your phone will synchronize to it. This is double speed now. But if a bunch of people do this, or maybe the whole room, or maybe a city, or something like that, I think this can be create a situation where people participate, where people can basically play 
play together, be active, get involved on a very, very simple, basic level. Yeah. So we have a little music piece now running here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's very nice as well because of uh, of course it will shift but imagine like a hundred people do this or like a small group of people you can change sounds in this application you can change speed so it becomes a kind of very playful yeah nice we have a little piece here Okay, I, uh, I quick in the end, uh, I'm kind of end on, of my talk about my work, <clears throat> but I would like to, I would like to uh, say something as well, how to integrate art in the city. I come from Berlin and um, for me, a very important aspect we, 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 we heard yesterday about architects, about basically uh, the, mono, the, the metropole, and then the megapolis. And uh, I think as well what we yesterday heard was a kind of micropolis, like the micropolis defining a, basically the metropole. So for me, the, the aspect of grow is very important, to grow things. Works, <laughs> and uh, I would like to. Uh, there is a, actually a very good example of of. Um, sorry, Let's skip out. There's a very good example of. Just let me go back. There's a very good example of of a building very close from here. Uh, from the metabolist time. Actually, this, this is a building, uh, the capsule hotel was, was supposed to grow. People could add things, shrink. So th the idea of concept is something you have already in Tokyo. There is a, this building, I think it's a very in, in, incredible, important building. And in the moment, there's a question if it goes down or not. I hope this is going to be kept because this is a kind of strong architectural icon for all of us. It's, it's just maybe 10 minutes walk away from here. I took this photos yesterday. And uh, just to explain a little the process of growth, what is basically an architectural urban concept uh, developed in, after World War II, but it's already implemented in any kind of older city. The, um, we, uh, in Berlin, <coughs> started with a very simple idea. Uh, basically, it was a few people from the authority of the city who basically gave space to artists uh, with an interim solution. So, so basically, spaces who are maybe going down, maybe going, going to transfer, maybe have a break, they're not basically this, this period when people moved out and until it maybe got uh, demolished, they gave this kind of spaces to artists. And this created uh, basically a very intense situation. Sometimes this period was years. And uh, the artists established themselves inside the city, sometimes in the middle of the city, sometimes in the center. And I think, I want to end this now. Uh, I'm running late. But I would like to leave the message. If you want to integrate art on a substantial level in the city, you have to give the artist space, what is not necessarily commercial used, and you have to understand as well that the art itself is not necessarily a product but can be sell, sold or can be commercialized in the first way. So I would like to leave you with this and I say thank you.